Hey guys, I'm Doug. That's Eric over there. That is a ZJ and that is a big friggin' plow on the front there. Eric, you want to tell them what we're doing today? All right, guys. Well, this is my plow Jeep, also known as Barney. And I went to the junkyard and pulled a mid-90s, early 2000s uh, alternator that's 130 amps, which is an upgrade for this because I run a 90 amp. And considering I use an electric winch on my plow Jeep, I need more amperage because every time I run this thing, it drains my battery. I actually went through a whole battery this one year just Killed it right out just from the winch from last year. So, we're going to do a project. I'll show you what I got for the conversion, and we'll go from there. How much do you think a project like this cost you, the way we did it? Uh, the way we're going to do it, alternator cost me about $30. The terminal ends cost me another maybe $5, and that was about it. $35 to double your alternator's output on a ZJ, the 4.0. All right, guys, so here's my alternator. Pick that up from uh, U-Pull. It's 130 amp. This comes in about uh, the 1999 to 2002 Dodge uh, Durango's or 1500s. You can either get the 130 amp that's usually on the 5.2 or you can find it, I did not, 160 amp on the uh, 5.9. Now you got to be careful picking up the right bracketry. You got to remember that you need two eyes over here and one over here. There's the older ones, the two eyes here, one eye here. I mean, the newer ones that come on the 4.7s that work actually for the newer Jeeps has an up and like an elbow on this one that you don't want for at least a XJ or a ZJ pretty much. And what else we need is a couple eyelets, one, uh, they say 4 gauge or 6 gauge, one eight gauge, and I have another small one just in case I need it. And then you need the factory plug that goes into the alternator. When you pull it, cut it off. It will be your best friend because then it's easy to wire. All right, step one in this process, uh, anytime you're doing an alternator on an XJ or a ZJ, you're going to want to remove your battery. That's a good uh, thing to do anyway, anytime you're doing anything electrical. You want to at least disconnect your battery, but for this application, pull it all the way out of the Jeep. All right, next thing you have to do is pull out your battery tray. Depending on the year, it might be a little different. Uh, I know on my XJ, it is slightly different. On this 93 ZJ, there's going to be a bolt down there, which that's going to be fun. That's all corroded. And uh, there's two more two there. over here. And then one more over here. Just oh, wow, you got four bolts. So the point is, sneakies. figure out how your battery tray comes out. A lot of these battery trays actually have a sensor on the bottom of them that when you're pulling this out, you have to be careful to disconnect properly. It's a weight sensor. Uh, no, excuse me. It's a heat sensor. And uh, what it does is it tells your engine if your battery is overheating and it will shut stuff down. If you rip that sensor out or don't put it back in properly, your Jeep will not run right and you will throw a check engine light. It's steps like this that are the worst in a project like this. Like getting the battery tray out is taking us like 15. There's a spark plug down there. You never know what you're gonna find. But uh, yeah, these are the worst parts. Like when you're scheduling out a project like this, you're thinking how much time it's gonna take you to remove the old alternator, put the new one in, crimp new lines. You're not thinking about spending 20 minutes getting a battery tray out, but there it is. All right, your next step is going to be to remove your serpentine belt on uh, XJ's like this, on four liters like this, there is a tensioner back behind the power steering right there. You loosen that up, and then your belt will loosen up, and you can slip it off. Uh, if your Jeep does not have a map on the front of it somewhere, like this, take a picture, take a mental note of how your belt goes. There's nothing worse than having your belt off after an hour of working and then not remembering which pulleys are over and which ones are under. All right, your next step is gonna be to remove your alternator bolts. There is two of them. They are a 15 mil is what I'm using. That's what seems to fit. Yeah. You can disconnect stuff before you take the alternator out. I recommend taking it out and then trying to get stuff off the back. You may or may not have an easy, as easy a time as Eric just had wiggling that out, all right? Uh, when I did it on my XJ not too long ago, which has the exact same setup, I had to get a pry bar and very carefully, not to break any of the aluminum housings, kind of pry it out. Uh, sometimes they're loose, sometimes they're not loose. There are only the two bolts, the long one on top, the short one on the bottom. Once those two are out, if it's not coming, it just means you have to uh, persuade it a little. All right, you're looking at a, a 10 up here for your power and your other one down bottom, back down here. I don't know if you can see it. It's gonna be uh, something around an eight. You wanna be careful, you don't wanna break those off. Uh, if your alternator's in good shape when you're done with this swap, you can probably sell it and uh, recoup some of the cost of the, the original alternator that you got. Now, now, if all those wiring harnesses are getting in your way, you can just cut those out. You just take a big pair of, get like a bush clippers, hedge clippers. Don't listen to them. Yeah, you just hack those out of the way, all of this Don't stuff. Don't do it. Yeah, it's called a, a harness delete and it gives you 20 more horsepower. All right, here's the side by side. This is the original Jeep alternator. This is the one out of the Dodge. You can see the Dodge is obviously a little bit bigger, but 
the mounting is the same, all right? So, I mean, everything else is the same. What we're gonna have to do is find a way to make this crazy multi-pin connector work with this much simpler two-pin and power setup on the, uh, on the Dodge alternator. That's really the meat of this swap, is figuring out how to swap these wires into this much simpler setup. All right, what we're doing here is a dry fit. Just make sure everything fits. We compared it on the bench, but uh, making sure it looks good. Eric, verdict? Uh, we just got to push this one bushing back a little bit, and I think we'll be good. All right, you can see it definitely fits spatially. Uh, even though it's a little bit larger, it fits down in the spot where the other one was. And so far, it looks like all the mounting is going to line up, which is a positive thing. All right, so this little metal sleeve that's put in there to... Uh, so that the, the aluminum casting doesn't have to be exact. It's just a little bit too far in on the Dodge one. So we are very carefully, because again, aluminum wings, gonna give it a couple little taps to try to move it. Make sure you support it so you, you know, when you're hitting, you're actually kind of really just putting all your force on that. Yeah, if you don't know anything about cast aluminum, it breaks very easily. So you wanna be very gentle and uh, be very careful at this stage. Ready, buddy? Mm -hmm. Boom, nailed it. All right, so what you're looking at there is the Dodge alternator in the Jeep. We have the bolts in. We're giving it a little uh, sight. It looks like the pulleys are lined up well. The bolts definitely fit. They fit snug after moving that little sleeve. So we are now good to move on to the, uh, the much less pleasant step, trying to sort out the wiring and get this thing functional. All right, what Eric's doing now is loosening the nut holding down this plastic piece. All right, on the Dodge alternator, this is the Jeep alternator, this plastic piece is turned the other way. And we want it to be oriented the same way as the old one so that the wires sit right and are not in the way of anything else moving. So he's removing that nut down inside, holding it up with a flathead to put pressure on it, and then hopefully it's gonna pop free. All right, you can see this side, this thing has a flat side to hold it in the right position. What we're gonna do is remove these little wings right here so we can turn it wherever we want. To the one by 30. All right, after grinding those little wings off, you can see that we can turn it whichever way we want. We're gonna get it so that it's oriented similar to this old Jeep one and uh, tighten down the nut and uh, then we're working like professionals. Okay guys, this is gonna be no point of return. Um, I mean, you could actually cut back here and theoretically crimp these back together if you really wanna put your old alternator back on, but I'm gonna cut right here. Leave myself a little bit of room, not much. So we're chopping off the old alternator uh, connector so that we can use those wires to wire it into the Dodge connector. Might want to do them one at a time instead of me being an idiot trying to do all of them. Those are really weak clippers too, that's my bad. There you go. And the final one. All right, after a little bit of hassle, you uh, have officially screwed up your Jeep. <laughs> now time to hope you can get back together. All right, you're just going to uh, strip a bit so that you can use a butt connector on these. Give yourself a good half inch or so. There you go. You do the same on your plug. You can see that. You're darker. Now, ideally, we would be soldering these, but we uh, do not have access to my soldering iron right now. So we're going to be using butt connectors and silicone to uh, pack these in. That's how I've always done other connectors before I started soldering. It's good enough, it'll last. It'll last longer than the rest of the Jeep, that's for darn sure. Hell yeah. So the two wires you cut off are both green, but one's green and black and one's solid green. The two wires that are gonna be on the Dodge connector that you cut off the donor vehicle, that thing that we're connecting right over there, that also has one solid and one stripe. All right, just follow the solid to the solid, the stripe to the stripe. Again, uh, soldering would be a better method. That's not what we're doing right here. This isn't that Jeep, we're not those guys. Uh, butt connectors will do just fine. You can pack them with silicone if uh, you want that extra bit of security and weatherproofing. All right, then you're gonna strip the black wire, which is the other wire that was on the original connector, and you're going to get another eyelet connector. And again, soldering would be the better way to do it. We're gonna crimp today. Now these ones with the plastic, you gotta be careful when you crimp them. You wanna crimp them all the way up at the top. 
If you do them too low, you'll just break the plastic, and that is there to uh, offer some shielding so you don't have too much exposed metal uh, running the possibility of arcing onto something. Uh, as long as that's good and strong on there and you're confident with it, I say you're okay. Again, soldering would be the right way to do it, but tonight's not that night. This isn't that Jeep, and we're not those guys. All right, so what you're going to be left with on the Jeep is the old power that remained untouched. That's going to go to the same spot on the new alternator, the power spot right here. You're going to have those two... Uh, wires that you wired into the new connector so you have a nice little connector to clip right into and you're gonna have a ground that's the one we put the eyelid on that you have to ground to some metal piece on the case uh, we're thinking right here there's a little metal clip uh, you got to be careful because a lot of these cases are aluminum or plastic so you have to find a spot like over here these studs are actual metal uh, I think we're gonna use this spot right here to ground it right to the case and uh, then the bolts will ground it into the rest of the vehicle. All right, as you can see, everything is connected where it needs to be. You got your extra ground right here. Your two wires are connected into the uh, the stock Dodge connector here and your power is right there. It is now to uh, put everything back together and see if this darn thing works. All right, I mean, everything gets put back together the way it was. Get your belt on. You gotta make sure your belt is tensioned properly. You don't uh, really want more than a half inch deflection, not even. Yeah, uh, if you have anything more than that, there's a good chance your belt will not actually turn your uh, alternator pulley and you'll get a false not charging reading. Put your battery back in, everything's tightened up. Double check everything, make sure you've removed all your tools from the engine bay. And right. then your buddy starts it up and we hope, we, uh, we hope everything works. And we're moving inside, and as you can see, the alternator is charging, which means we have properly hooked everything up. All the wires are where they belong. This Jeep is properly communicating with the new alternator, and that new alternator is in fact charging the battery. And what does all that spell, Eric? More winch power! More winch power and a success. <laughs> All right, so moving this seven foot, very large plow used to absolutely drain Eric's battery. His uh, voltage gauge would drop down to nine and uh, it would just struggle. And uh, you can hear now it's absolutely not working at all. That new alternator's pushing enough energy that um, yeah, it's just a hundred times better. It's not gonna put all that strain on the battery and the system. Uh, he's inside the Jeep right now showing that uh, as he's pulling it up, as he's pulling this plow all the way from the ground, his gauge is not moving at all, not moving off 14 volts. And that's what we were trying to do. I mean, that's the whole point. So this swap is absolutely a must if you're running big subs, if you're running a plow, if you're running crazy lights, you're gonna wanna swap in the larger 130 amp uh, alternator. All right, guys, to recap the project, uh, really all you're doing, and Eric uh, researched this exhaustively for months leading up to this project so that we knew that uh, the first time we did it would be the last time because the worst possible thing would be to put this all back together <laughs> yeah. and then you know have it not charge or yeah, something. Being stuck in those garage is not part of the end of the exactly, night. Exactly, exactly. So uh, I would say start to finish, this was like an hour and a half project, not even. It's and there simple were, as replacing your alternator. <laughs> yeah, there were some shenanigans in there, but uh, that's it. What you're really doing to break it down to its most basic level is you're cutting out the old connections uh, from the vehicle to the alternator and you're replacing them with new connections that fit the new alternator. That's really all you're doing that's different. Uh, so if you guys like this video, obviously if you have any questions, if there's anything we didn't cover, leave it down in the comments. Find us on Facebook, on uh, d and &E in the Garage. Any more questions, any more customizations you want us to do to our Jeeps, let us know. We're always entertaining new ideas. All right, guys, if you like this video, if you found it entertaining, if you found it informative, and we hope you did, uh, by all means, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.